Hello everybody, I am Bryce Machine Bates from Team Evil Geniuses and this is going to be a replay review brought to you by EvilGeniuses.net. Today's, uh, uh, today's replay is actually going to be a Zerg vs. Protoss on Entombed, so let's go ahead and jump into the game. Alright, now the particular sort of highlight in this game is actually um, Mutalisk, uh, like Mutalisk openings in the Zerg vs. Protoss uh, matchup. Some of the sort of keys to uh, Mutalis in general uh, against Protoss when, when you're going like pretty like Muta heavy composition or like pure, pure Muta, not just like Rojan Muta, you never really want to confront your opponent's army uh, head on. You're purely looking for base trade scenarios, trying to use the advantage of Mutalis mobility over you know, the slower uh, sort of mobility of like Stalker, uh, even like Blink Stalker or like Archon Storm and just kind of dodging their, uh, you know, just armies and trying to utilize your heavy DPS in Ling Muta to basically just kill off all their buildings before they can kill you. So you're never really opening with Mutas, as I said, just confront armies. Uh, and there's always specific situations. Obviously, if you can get a, a good trade out, like obviously if, if you have something like 30 mutilists, it's fine to go ahead and engage five stalkers or something like that, but you're always just trying to look for cost-efficient uh, cost efficient engagements. Uh, meanwhile, um, this is actually Entombed, which is considered a pretty difficult map for the Zerg versus Protoss uh, matchup in, you know, for Zerg because of this ramp. Uh, there's a ramp leading to the third as well. It's very easy for them to force field off any sort of ground-centric armies. And so that's why um, this is a map that I prefer to add in Needless play on, uh, as opposed to like you know more of your standard map, <clears throat> like something like uh, Antigua Shipyard, which in which case like Roach uh, timings or Roach Infester is completely fine. Um, so you'll see, you know, Mutalises are also good on this map because it's actually a very large map. You can really exploit mobility and base trade situations. But anyways, looks like I've opened with just a standard 15 hatch uh, expand, or 15 pool, 15 ha or 16 hatch expand. Killing off the pylon here at my third. Uh, meanwhile, these guys, next step is natural. You really want to try to get your third extremely early against Protoss. And the other uh, sort of key point on this map is this rock separating the natural and third. Because Zerg takes their third so much quicker than like a, your, uh, like a Protoss player, you really want to make sure you're working um, down this rock with all of your unit or idle unit time. Anytime you have Zerglings that aren't at watchtowers, aren't scouting out in front of your opponent's base for probes or something, uh, they should be sitting at this rock trying to tear this down as quickly as possible so you can spread the creep. Uh, and, and like rally and uh, send drones uh, quicker between your bases and also help to defend them better. Uh, because once this rocks down, you basically just utilize this pathway. If they're trying to hit you with a two base time, you can run back and forth through here with like uh, zerglings, roaches, uh, you can set up spine cores on top of here as well, spread the creep, all that sort of standard stuff. Anyways, uh, joining up here, take my double Vespian Geysers at 44 supply. It's pretty standard. Uh, because most Protosses are opening Forge Expand, you really uh, don't need to take your Vespian Geysers or uh, tell this time because Zergling speed isn't going to help you. The only uh, time you're really getting early Zergling speed is just to attain map control from like early uh, you know, like stalker probably, or, or like stalker-centric armies. But because Protosses are securing this early third, they've just given up map control. You're not really worried about uh, any heavy gateway timings early on. And so you can just kind of drone up. I'm free to, you know, just spend all, almost all my resources on Harvester Count, as you see here. We're just now at that tipping point where we're evening up, and I'm about to surpass him in Harvesters. And you can see here, as I was saying, He's already got his third up. It's extremely early inside the game. At eight minute mark, next is about 70% complete. He's got a full wall off here. There's no way I could actually just make a round of roaches right now with this roach worn and have uh, any chance of pressuring this, breaking this down, and killing this third. Uh, because he's got cannons, he's got sentries, uh, you know, he'd be able to fend it off uh, pretty easily here. And so, uh, I've opted for my early lair. I always get lair before speed. In this uh, case, I'm really delaying speed to get 
this early plus one melee because I know Zergling's speed isn't really going to help me yet until I'm able to tear down some of these walls. And he's already given up map control. And with this very quick third, he has no intention of moving out uh, anytime soon. So I've secured the early uh, fifth and sixth Vespian geysers at my third. I should be mining them here soon. It's uh, obviously a mistake. Um, but as my layer completes, the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting my Spire. I'm getting that Zergling speed. Uh, I have a macro hatch here. And because he has that third and I've scouted it, I really want to get a pretty uh, decently early fourth uh, here. This is going to give me, you know, these two Vespian geysers, basically, once I'm able to utilize them, are going to allow me to tech up uh, to hive, you know, try to get broodlords or something like that. Or uh, I can actually just basically produce more mutilus out of them and stay on, like, layer tech for a bit longer, but have sort of a, a, a stronger, like, heavier mutilus composition. So as we see here, producing some... Roachling, this is probably just defensive in case he was doing a two-base timing, but the second I scouted this third, I stopped all roach and ling production and started droning once again. As you can see here, my harvester count is at 76 to 71. I'm probably going to get somewhere around 80 to 85. Uh, that's uh, kind of a typical number in the matchup. And as we see here, I'm also producing a baneling nest. Banelings work uh, pretty well particularly with Mutilus. If I'm able to kill off all of the sentries uh, in his arsenal and he's unable to force field, you can get very cost-effective engagements uh, with Banelings, just uh, you know, hitting uh, whether it's Stalkers, well, mainly Stalkers, but uh, um, Stalker, Zealot, and just allowing my Zerglings to, to get inside and kill, uh, kill off you know, basically just the Stalkers. Blink Stalkers is the only thing we're really worried about until Archons or Storm get out. So I'm showing some Roachling pressure on the map, uh, hoping I can force a little extra units or at least um, positioning. And as you see, he hits a full warp in his third here. He's worried about some ground pressure. Meanwhile, my Mutilus are out on the map, and, you know, this is the first time I'm going to show them. Group them all up, and I'm probably just going to hit his natural here, pick off a few probes. He did a good job of scouting, and he has this really early blink tech, so it shouldn't be too difficult for him to uh, defend here. But it's really just about uh, trying to hit multiple places at once. You see, as I realized I distracted him and was able to take his concentration away, I'm able to run in with a group of Zerglings and get a couple Stalker kills. And, you know, now he's forced to keep some Stalkers over here in order to try to defend against, you know, Mutilus destroying inside the mineral line again. That allows me more than enough time to, you know, run my Zerglings in, hit with my Mutilus, and then all I'm trying to do is forcing him to defend as many positions as possible. He has no cannons inside his main. I'm able to clear up uh, a few more probes from that prone line, dodge over the third. I cause a warp in over here. Meanwhile, you know, I force him to defend his main, uh, defend his third, and I'm just hitting over here trying to look for any weaknesses in uh, his unit position. I'm not quite able to pick off centers there, but I'm picking off more and more probes. Uh, scattered some stalkers inside the main and killed the cannon to his third. I'm trying to open up an entrance for my zerglings and banelings to get very cost-effective engagements uh, any way possible. If He's able to sit on top of this ramp like a sentry, and I don't break this wall down, and I try to attack with a ton of Zergling Baneling, and he hits a force field right there. I'm basically just throwing a bunch of units away. Meanwhile, I have my fourth up. Notice I'm just getting really attack upgrades because, as I said before, unless if he had a bunch of like Archon here or Phoenix, I would probably just be sitting back, throwing down a ton of spine crawlers and looking for a base trade scenario, waiting for him to move out. But with this stalker-centric army, um, I feel I can actually get pretty cost-effective engagements as long as he's not blocking this and not hitting his force fields properly. And so once again, I've shown my Mutilus over here. He's moved himself out of position. I hit this cannon just to pull him out of position, actually. So here's the blink I was looking for. And let's see what these do. Yep. So I pulled him off to the right of his base. Uh, he actually did a very good job of defending. But typically, I'm trying to just look uh, for any way possible to pull him out of position, because my units do such high DPS that if he doesn't react accordingly, I, I could do a ton of damage uh, very quickly. So now, once again, I'm just trying to look to 
start creating some weaknesses. Almost break down that wall. He pulls out of position again. I get some Zergings in, pick up one of his sentries and a pylon, and now I'm able to just stream in Zerglings, Banelings, and pick off a lot of these stalkers. Meanwhile, I'm just rallying all five of my hatcheries, producing as many Zerglings uh, and Nebulus as I can. And let's see here. Yep, once again, pull them out to the side. I've killed off all of the probes in natural. You look at the harvester count, 74 to 50. And yeah, a little bit behind on my upgrade. Should be starting armor here soon. But he's uh, getting pretty cost-effective engagements, but because I'm able to ruin this mineral line, uh, you know, and, and take his harvester count down, I essentially just have more resources to work with. So, uh, he makes a mistake, moving outside his wall, able to capitalize on it, kill off all the stalkers. And from here, it's just kind of GG. I'm able to stream in. Uh, the Zerglings do a great job of tanking for the Mutalists. The Mutalists have such high DPS, especially with that bounce attack. I'm able to just pick off multiple stalkers simultaneously. And he's forced to GG. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Once again, this I am uh, Bryce Machine Bates uh, from Team Evil Geniuses. And this has been a replay review. If you guys like this, you can check out this and more at evilgeniuses.net. Take care.